Ladies and gentlemen, we live in truly fascinating but also scary times. We've got AI, we've got ChatGPT, and now we've got deep fakes. Obviously, you've seen the title of the video and you may have already heard about the story, but what I have for you today is a very interesting story that should serve as a case study. Now, I've got the article in here from Wyan News and it says Hong Kong firm loses over $25 million after employees video call with deep fake chief financial officer and others. Now, if you don't know about this story, if this is the first time you're hearing a multinational company on this close, we don't know the name, they had a base in Hong Kong and an employee who worked in the Hong Kong branch, he works for the chief, uh, the financial department, right? He got a message from somebody claiming to be the chief financial officer for the entire company. Now, to the credit of this employee, he was suspicious at first because it was like, you know, why would the chief financial officer be messaging me? However, he was invited to join a meeting via Zoom or Skype. I don't really know. And in that meeting, he got to see the chief financial officer and also other employees that he actually recognized. So he thought he was in a real meeting, not knowing that everyone he was seeing in that meeting, they were all fake. These were simply deep fakes and not real people. And this is what makes this particular story very unique because in the past, the deep fake scams have usually involved the deep fake and then the person being tricked. It's usually been a one-on-one -on -one conversation. However, in this case, we had deep fakes of several employees. And of course, the employee that was tricked, he lost all doubt when he saw all the people. He thought, oh, I'm in a real meeting. And it was in the meeting where he was instructed to actually uh, transfer $25 million to different accounts. Now, I want to read something very, very interesting from this particular article. So we have the acting senior superintendent, Baron Chan Shunqing, who I believe was in charge of the case. Now, according to Chan, the worker had been suspicious since he received the message purportedly, excuse me, purportedly from the company's uh, UK-based CFO and first dismissed it as a phishing email back in January. The worker, according to Chen, dismissed the doubts after the video call because other people in attendance had looked and sounded just like colleagues and some others he recognized. So the police official also said that the scammers asked the victim to introduce himself but did not actually interact with the person during the meeting. Additionally, the fake images on the screen mainly gave orders before the call ended abruptly. So obviously, there was no way how these scammers were going to record a meeting where they would actually have like an actual conversation with this employee that was fooled. They could have done it in such a way that in the very beginning, maybe the financial officer would say, hey, uh, John, introduce yourself to the others. And then John would say, hey, my name is John. I work for the financial department, blah, blah, blah. And then, okay. And then they'll continue the meeting without John actually saying anything. So that's very, very, very key here because the deep fakes did not actually interact with the person during the meeting. And of course, the employee then followed the instructions and made 15 transfers, totaling 25.6 million to five Hong Kong uh, bank accounts. Now, a question you might have here is how were the scammers able to create the deep fakes? of the chief financial officer and also the other employees that were in this meeting. It's very likely they got the video and audio from publicly available information, probably maybe from the company's uh, YouTube channel as an example. Maybe they have a YouTube channel where they post videos from their meetings and events and summits and you know whatever. Maybe they could have even gotten the content from the social media profiles of the CFO and the other employees as well. There's so much content out there and you, 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 could be, you can be shocked as to what scammers are able to create just from any kind of content they're able to get off you. So I believe that's how they were able to create a deep fix. They simply got the content, the video and audio from publicly uh, available information. So, so far, uh, six people have been arrested 
Uh, Chan said the police have arrested six people so far. He also spoke about eight stolen Hong Kong identity cards involved in scams. And finally, according to the police, there have been at least 20 such incidents where AI deepfakes have been used to trick financial, uh, I'm sorry, trick facial recognition programs into making 90 loan applications and 54 bank registrations by imitating the people pictured on the identity cards. This is truly, truly scary. And it gets even more scary when you think about the fact that we're still in the very early days of deep fakes and AI and chat GPT. Like imagine what it's going to be like a year or two or three years from now. All this technology, the deep fakes, AI, they're going to become so much more effective, so much more polished that it might become virtually impossible to tell the difference between a real person and an actual deep fake. This is truly, truly scary. Now, before I round up the video, you may be wondering, okay, how can a company actually prevent themselves from falling victim to this particular kind of scam? It's quite simple, actually. There needs to be some sort of a policy or protocol in place before such huge transfers can be made. So maybe, for example, there needs to be like three or four people that will need to sign off before the transaction is made. So maybe the CEO, the chief financial officer, the chief accountant, and maybe somebody else, they will all need to maybe send an email or have like a video call with the person who is supposed to make the transfer. And one thing that could also be done is if there is some sort of like a secret code or a secret uh, passphrase or passkey that needs to be said or provided before the transaction can be made. So obviously this password or passcode should be kept secret to only like three or four people who are responsible for making such financial transactions. So before any financial trans transaction can be made, that password, that passcode will need to be provided before it can be done. That will go a very long way to preventing these particular kinds of scams. But that's it. Once again, Hong Kong firm loses over $25 million to deep fake scam. Truly fascinating. Very, very scary. But hey, it is 2024. It is the world that we live in today. So anyways, if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. Put them down in the comment section below. If you're new here to the channel, welcome to Lab Cyber. I make content around cybersecurity and cybercrime. If you enjoyed the video, please do share it with anyone who may feel might benefit from it. Of course, do subscribe. Hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video. Stay safe out there and I'll talk to you next time.